Hello my master chefs. I'm King Link and this is a last look and review of Overcooked by Ghost Town Games. First, a spoiler warning. I'm going to discuss a number of levels in passing and talk a bit about the finale of the game. I won't ruin anything on purpose, as there's not many surprises from the game. However, I will talk about the locations you visit, and that might upset some people. In addition, the video is going to show a number of locations and gameplay from the game. If you prefer, there is a written review in the description. So with that said, let's talk about Overcooked. The first thing that strikes me about this game is the graphics. I love the art style in this game. You have humans with these nice put pudgy bodies that I like. Everything in the game is made cute. However, it's not sickeningly sweet like some games, but it is enjoyable. The characters in the game are great as well. There's the Onion King that's leading your team, and Kevin his dog, and then a number of characters including a ch a Kitten and a Raccoon that can be chefs in the game. I was sad, uh, sadly wrong about the fact that there's no dogs that are choosable, but there's a lot of great choices here. The graphics are actually quite good. It helps making a stressful situation more friendly, and Overcooked can become a, quite a stressful situation, which we'll get to in one moment. Still, when something is lit on fire or an order is missed, the graphics make it a challenge rather than a penalty or a scary situation. The story of the game is a giant meatball monster appears and is attacking the city. The first level is a tutorial, but you'll fail to feed the monster and you have to go back in time to learn more skills. You fail no matter how well you do on the tutorial. Yeah, overall the story doesn't make a lot of sense, but I don't know if a cooking game really needs a large story, and there's a reason for you to go and cook and learn new styles, and so that works. Really, only the first and last level tie into the main story, and there's a few moments of meeting the Onion King to tell you what's going on. So that leads to the gameplay of Overcooked, and the core of the game is about cooking food to order. Customers' orders come in like a, they want a three onion soup, and you have to chop the onions, then cook the soup in a soup pan. The chopping takes time as does the cooking, and eventually you can serve it. There are different foods and styles, but you basically are serving up the requested food in each level. The goal of the game is to get through as many orders as fast as possible, as you get graded on your earned money. It sounds simple, and it really is. And in the first three or four levels, there's no reason to question it. However, there's a level where you're playing on a ship and the counters you're cooking on start sliding back and forth. And suddenly you see the real gameplay of Overcooked. It's not the cooking that's challenging the player, it's the level design. There are a lot of great levels. There's icebergs, space stations, some active volcanoes with stations that rotate around you. Each one brings a new and exciting challenge. You really ha have to wait more than two levels to see something new and fresh, and have to change up how you've been working on the previous levels. There are 28 levels, and I constantly was interested in the game and, and wanted to see what was coming next through all of them, because the game kept throwing something new at me. I also found myself running the same level a few times to figure out a better strategy and optimizing my solution to get a third star. Well, I gave up the goal of, get, uh, of getting three stars on every stage, it's still a goal to reach for and worth challenging yourself for, and the levels definitely made it exciting to retry. The only level I found frustrating was the finale. And, again, there is a spoiler here, but I'm going to just explain how the level works. You return and go up against the meatball a second time, and, the, and this time the game demands to see the full mastery earned. It's a 15 minute marathon level where you have to cook everything. I lost the level four times, so I, lo I spent about an hour playing it before going on the final win. But mostly it was with time running out while carrying the final dish to the meatball. So it's very highly polished to the point where you can almost beat it. But it was annoying because the level took 15 minutes. 
And it's, it's a little bit of a complaint, but at the same time, one hard level at the end of the game, especially one that take, tackles every type of food and isn't as repetitive, is acceptable. The rest of the levels kept the timer between three and maybe six minutes. I think it's more five, but I think there might have been a few six minute levels. And with those time frames, replaying feels better. The game also supports co-op, and when I say supports, I think it heavily incentivizes it. In single player, you control two chefs. They can be tasked with simple chores like chopping vegetables or weight washing dishes as you move the other chef around. However, it's important that it's understood that they are controlled. You can't command them, sadly. With the second player, there's more efficiency here. So that will allow you to do more and it will allow you to use teamwork. However, the developers probably caught on to this and made the game harder as you add more players. A three star that might be worth 100 points for a single player becomes worth about 120 points. As you add more players, the value keeps going up, so it's always a challenging experience. Um, you're not able to cheat the system by adding more players, though it might become easier or harder depending on how skilled your teammates are. Now, if you play this in multiplayer, communication is of course essential here. I've gotten into a number of fights with other players, it's hectic and stressful, as I said, and tempers flare. But it's also a lot of fun to complete the level you work as a team and you feel like you're a team. However, any problems with your friendship um, with your partner can become very apparent quickly in Overcooked. I believe multiplayer is the intended way to play the game. And the fact that single pl player works so well is only through great game design. The idea of communication and teamwork is the point of Overcooked and it's a lot of fun whether played with two play players or even up to four players in a party experience. At the same time, there's no online multiplayer, so this is purely couch co-op. There's even a versus kitchen if you want to go head-to-head -head with someone, so you can prove who's the best chef. Now, besides the final level I mentioned, there's a couple other issues worth mentioning. So I've mentioned there's no online multiplayer, and the game feels slightly off in single player. It's still very playable, and I played the entire game in single player. But I feel like the game is intended to be in multiplayer, and it should be played that way at least once to get the real experience. There's also a limited number of food types in the game. You cook soup, burgers, burritos, fish and chips, pizzas, and salads. All of them are really done really well, but that's all in the game. 28 levels, but only 6 foods, and most levels you're cooking an exclusive food, so that's about five levels where you cook each dish. There's also no change to the food as you progress. When you learn burgers, there's three types of burgers. A plain burger, a lettuce burger, and a lettuce and tomato burger. That's it. I could have imagined them adding more to it, like maybe onions, sautéed onions, onion rings, um, sautéed mushrooms, even a, making it a chicken sandwich instead of a burger, or even a fish fillet, and so on. Sadly, the game just sticks with the three types it starts out with, and it doesn't really advance the next tier. There's a few times also that I missed three stars, and I swear there's a randomness in the orders that got in the way. If I cooked plain burgers, which is two required ingredients, a cooked burger and then a bun, that's a lot faster than a lettuce and tomato burger that requires chopping more vegetables. It takes longer, but isn't isn't worth any more money for some reason. You get a slightly higher tip, but that's it. So this is probably not a true bug with the game behind the scenes, and I feel like it probably evens out in the end and will give you the same amount in a different order, but it still feels like it could be slightly wrong. Finally, I want to talk about DLC for the game. There's a free DLC that added 8 new levels, new characters, new food types, including a turkey and a stew, and more. There are 8 excellent le levels in my opinion. Probably, if I rank them, all 8 might be in my top 10. They're really uh, fantastic levels. But, there's also a paid DLC. Well, that one is 6 levels, 4 new chefs, there is new food, 
but it's a $5 list price. Now, the free DLC is a no-brainer. Even if uh, you are thinking about this game, definitely get the free DLC with it, of course. But the other DLC, I don't know. It doesn't hurt the game, and it doesn't hurt my score on it, but I feel like it needs to be mentioned here. It's an odd thing. Even right now, during the Steam sale, that DLC is mo costing more than a dollar. It's, it's a bit much for me. And I know we're squabbling over a dollar, but still. You have a great DLC, you have a great length of game. It just seems too pricey. So ultimately, that we come to the end. That's pretty much everything I have to say about Overcooked. It's not the most realistic game, but it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed every level. Every, even the frustration with the finale isn't going to dampen the game. After that level, I couldn't put it down and ran through the eight DLC levels, still having a great time. Yeah, the single player isn't as good as multiplayer, and the lack of meals to prepare do lower the score just a touch. It's not a perfect game but it is exciting and worth trying even if cooking doesn't seem like your type of game. With that being said, it's score time. And Overcooked, it's worthy of very high praise in my mind. It's going to get a 4.5 out of 5. I've given two of these scores in three reviews. I know it seems like I'm being easy on games, but both Ruiner and Overcooked deserves those high marks that they received. I feel like the 4.5 is a special number for me, and same with the 5.0. They're kind of the games that I have in my pantheon of games that these are the ones you have to try no matter what. And Overcooked is one that I feel like you have to try. Even if you don't like it, it's worth seeing just how unique and different it is, especially once you touch that multiplayer aspect. Well, it's about that time. It's time for me to go. This is King Link. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. This is a third video of the new style, and if you enjoyed this, please let me know so that I can tell which way to go in the future. For more information and the full review, check the description, and check my site at kinglink-reviews.com, and I'll see you next time.